This is part four of a short crash course video series on photo editing. We're using GIMP 2.10, but we're not looking at tools in the nitty gritty of how to use the interface. We're looking at the basic concepts that will carry over into others like Photoshop so you can understand how the editor and how the computer thinks so that editing your photos will be awesome. And then we're going to take a little mountain picture here and, and, and we're going to see what we can do with it. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer so that when I make changes I can save them but I still have my original. Now look at these shadows, they're really dark. The, the woods did not look that dark on the day I took this photo. So I'm going to go to my colors menu. Now previously we looked at curves. Now watch, watch this shadow in this tree here, but also watch our clouds out here. So I'm going to lower our end of the spectrum here and, and move it over toward, you know, to, to favor our dark shadows. We've got a lot of shadows. Okay, we can see that better. Oh, what if I do a little bit more? I want to see more of that tree. Look at that tree just light up. Okay, well, now it's like the sky is too bright. I just, it's too bright and I want, I want better clouds out there because it, it didn't look that blinding when I was there. So I'm going to take this bring it down a little bit. Look at that. Now I can see the clouds that are out there. That's a very subtle, simple S-curve. Actually, that's a little bit on the heavy end. You wouldn't normally do that, but I, I did it here, I suppose. Well, there we are. Now, this is what we started with. And with a simple little S-curve in our curves, we got this. Now, maybe that's better, maybe it's not. Depends on what you want, but this is, this is how it works. Well, I'm going to duplicate that layer again, Control shift d so I've got another one here to work with. I'd still like to see a little bit more color going on. So I'm going to go to Colors. This is a tool we used before, Hue Saturation, okay? And I'm just going to turn up the saturation. So the greens are greener and the blues are bluer. Look, look at that. Look at that. Now we've got more of the color. It's, it's a green looking wood. That maybe is too much. That's almost radioactive neon. Let's turn it down a little bit. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it there. That's good enough. Remember, this is what we started with. And this is what we ended up with. Now, while we're here, I'm going to introduce the tool. And I'm, I'm going to duplicate our original layer here and show you something else. I'm going to introduce you to the tool Brightness and Contrast. Now, brightness is simple. It, it, it goes, you know, it's, it's dark and lighter. Okay. I could turn up the brightness to show our shadows more, but we already solved that with curves better. Turning up the brightness is not the best way to deal with shadows because it just turns up everything instead of one area. And curves, curves and levels are where you want to deal with your shadows. We looked at that previously. I'm going to hit my favorite button here, reset. Contrast. Contrast will move all colors from either, you know, if you turn down the contrast and there's no difference in anything, everything's just gray, just 50% color, okay? But if you turn contrast all the way up, then you end up with only eight colors. That's where it's going. That's how contrast works. Here, you may recall this from our first video, RGB, CMYK. There's only eight colors here. You can mix them this way or mix them inside out, but you've got red, green, blue, cyan, yellow, and magenta, and white and black. Those eight colors are the extreme colors that we get, and if we turn our contrast all the way up, we end up with only those eight colors. Look here, we've got red and yellow over here. It's a little bit of green, blue, cyan, black, and white. And, and if you looked at it, those are pure. In fact, let's go ahead and click OK here and save it. Let's, let's use our eyedropper tool and see what this is. Is that pure blue? Let's look. There it is, 0000, zero, zero, zero FF. That is pure, perfect blue. So we're, we're going to end up with, oh, OK, we'll do cyan over here. It'll have two. There we go. See, that no, no red, nothing in the red channel. But then we've got our green channel, FF, and our blue channel, FF, full, full light. So you, when you turn the contrast all the way up, you end up with only the, 
the basic eight extreme colors. And that's where contrast is eventually going. Now, one of the little secrets that I like to use, if you want to magazineify your photo, you turn the contrast up a bit and turn the brightness up not quite so much. Or you could turn the brightness down and the contrast up a bit. But some, somehow you want, you know, brightness here, contrast a little more. And depending on your level of extremeness, uh, you can you can sort of magazineify your, your photo. That, that's, a, that's a cute little trick that you might see some people do once in a while. So that's how brightness and contrast works. It depends on how you want to use it. Remember, contrast eventually is going to the basic eight colors. All right, okay, that was fun, and we're done editing this for now. I'm going to discard the changes. Let's go on to another picture. Now, this is Mount Jade. It's, it, it's the highest mountain in East Asia outside the Kunlun and Himalayas. Um, it's actually 50 meters taller than Mount Fuji right there, that mountain up there. Well, this is a, it's a little bit light and, and hazy looking. That, that, that mountain back there was actually easier to see when I was there, and I want it to look more like it was when I was there. So I'm going to go to colors, and I'm going to do brightness contrast. Now, I'm not going to mess, I, I could turn down the brightness, but that's not going to solve my problem. I'm just wearing sunglasses, and it still looks hazy in the picture. Look at my favorite reset button. I'm just going to turn up the contrast just a little bit. Look at that. Look at what that little touch with the contrast did to bring out. It doesn't look so cloudy anymore because the lights and darks and greens and reds and whatever are, are different in there. Yes, they're red in there because brown is essentially dark yellow and yellow is red and green mixed. So there are reds in that mountain. And I know that because I know the basic RGB colors. Very important. Okay, so I haven't messed with the brightness. I could, but that's not... It's just no, there's no need. I've turned up the contrast just a little bit, you know, not too much. I don't want to magazineify it. You know, look, look at this. Here we've got nothing but red, yellow, maybe green, and white and black. I just want to turn it up. That, that's our original color. I just want to turn it up a little bit. A little bit. Okay, well, I, I need to duplicate this before I make any changes to it. So I'm going to go to colors, brightness, contrast, turn it up a little bit. Oh, I think there, that's beautiful. That's beautiful right there. And now I still want some more colors, so I'm going to go to colors. Hue saturation, one of my favorites. And I'm just going to turn up the saturation a little bit so that the greens are greener and the reds are red. Look at, see, the more, look at that. That's beautiful. Okay, there we go. Now, now, that's more what the mountain looked like on that day. And it was a little bit yellowish because the sun was setting. So speaking of the sun setting, as we're looking at that mountain there, if we turn to our right, we're looking at this. Okay, well here we've got a, a beautiful sunset picture. Well, it, it, we, we don't want to paint our own sunset, but we want it to look more like it looked like on that day. Well, you, you really don't need these mountains. I could go to curves or levels. And, and I could change our middle point to see what was inside those shadows, see the trees in them, but that's not the point of this sunset. So I don't want to do that. First, I'm going to duplicate my original so I'm, I can back up. I'm, I'm going to do brightness contrast, make the brights brighter and the darks darker. I'm just going to turn up the contrast so that, that those mountains become more of a silhouette backdrop celebrating the sunset and the clouds. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to make my duplicate before I change other things. And now I, those clouds look a little bit boring, so I just want more color. Not more difference, more color. Thicker colors, that's saturation. So I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Look at that. Here we go. Now there's a lot I could do with this that might be different. And, and that's that's a question of taste, but uh, you know this is this is how the tools work. You could have your own opinion. Okay, so I'm I'm not going to do anything with those changes there. Um, there's one more photo that that we're going to look at here. This was a random photo from 12 years ago. 
Uh, this young man is 15 years old and we're using this by permission and this is a Coca-Cola can. It wasn't planned at all. It was a random picture and uh, I don't know what Coca-Cola thinks about this free advertising, uh, but uh, the Coca-Cola is welcome to contact me in friendship and cooperation. But anyhow, th this is a random photograph that was taken and it was very magical. Now, taking what we've learned what do you see is possible in this picture? He's got red eye. We've got a lot of red tones in the brown wall. This television screen is, is very dark. And, and if we change stuff to it, it could get darker still. There's lots we can do with shadows, lightening and darkening there. What's possible in this? Look, he's got, he's got red here. He's got red written on his arm. Watch this. If we go to colors, and we go to brightness contrast. If we turn up the contrast, we're only going to have our eight basic colors. I'm just going to wipe it all the way up and look at that. Now, if I wanted to see more of his skin, I could turn up the brightness. Okay. There we go. Look at that. Now, you might not know that's possible just looking at the basic picture unless you understand how photo editing works. And then, you know, from, from, from the understanding of how photo editors and how computers look at colors and, and, and photographs and light, you'd know what's possible. We turn up the brightness a little bit. doesn't seem like that big of a difference. But when we take the contrast and turn it up, you see more of his skin or even more of the wall. Well, there we go. That concludes this video.